Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. A very welcome, my friends, and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. Ouch, that hurt. Hello, welcome back to Big Mouth, and you can keep this and any other conversation I ignite going over on my Twitter at Movies TV Mag, on my Vero at Big Mouth One, and the extension to this channel is my Instagram, Big Mouth. And welcome to Thursday's edition, yes, Thursday's edition of the DCEU Daily, where nothing's really happening uh, a day after that hideous, toxic variety article. But I do want to rant. I want to rant about Superman and Superman's relationship with Warner Brothers. Now, back in the day, there's nothing that made me prouder that Warner Brothers and Superman were intertwined. But not anymore. I'm angry. I'm angry because this studio owns the rights to Superman and they do nothing with it. They don't take advantage of it. It's absolutely ridiculous, right? Let's go back to the day where we were first introduced to live action Superman, or I was, um, via Superman the movie, right? So we had Superman, Superman 2, Superman 3, Superman 4, nothing, nothing, nothing. There was rumours that Christopher Reeve was going to do a Superman 5. Never happened. We then went down the Superboy TV show route, which wasn't about the uh, clone of Clark Kent and Lex Luthor. It was about a younger version of Superman. Not my cup of tea. tea. Didn't particularly enjoy it, but a lot of people did. And that was produced by the sorts all kinds as well. So we, we basically, after 87, we had Jack. Then in the 90s, we had the hideous... Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. A lot of you like it, I know. A lot of a lot of women liked it. It was kind of a romantic comedy. I thought Dean Cain was a terrible Superman. I thought Terry Hatcher kind of, because she was such a great actor, really held that show together for four seasons. But it was a terrible show. But you could kind of say that Terry Hatcher was a, an acceptable version of Lois Lane. Let's take it that far. So... After Lois and Clark, and I think, when did that go off the air? 93, 94, or whatever, whatever, whenever it did. Years and years went, went past, and then we, get, we got the fat, fantastic, fantabulous Smallville. Smallville went for a decade. It, this was a pre-Superman story, an origin TV series that really touched on how Lex Luthor becomes Lex Luthor and how Clark Kent eventually becomes the hero we know and love. Great show. Al Miles created a beautiful show. So after, then we in the middle of that, I think really season after season five, was it season five? We had Superman Returns. Finally, after years, 87, uh, uh, you know, nearly about 19 years, was it? I don't know. About 19, 20 years after Superman 4, we got Superman Returns. Superman Returns split audiences, but not passionately. People weren't, this wasn't, we're not talking about BVS. We're not talking about explosive divisiveness. We're talking about a film that made about just under 400 million. Now this film is an interesting film because Brian Singer, who still is a genius in my books, no matter what he gets up to in real life, right, could have come up with a great original story. But no, they allowed him to do half of a, a love letter to Richard Donner's Superman the movie, which I love by the way, and a kind of new take. And Brian got it hideously wrong. He was talking a lot of stuff. He was talking about attracting more women to Superman. What? So more a mess. So basically, Superman was dead. Superman was dead. No more Superman. So the, the, now originally, Brian Singer was going to do this whole Superman Man of Steel. It was going to be a sequel to Superman Returns. I wanted a sequel to Superman Returns. I thought we could get a really awesome one. And then there was this script going around about Brainiac being the villain and Brandon Ralph Superman showing him around Earth, but then they fall, fall out when he says, why don't you why don't you conquer these people? Why do you protect them? And basically, in the end, we were going to get this epic fight where Brainiac takes the form of Superman's son, Jason, and Superman mistakenly kills Jason. This would have been epic. This would have been awesome. This would have been one of the great sequels. I just feel it in my blood. But it was at the time of the writer's strike, which gave WB an excuse to delay it, then it never happened. So 
Superman Returns was 2006. 2007, no Superman movie. 2008, no Superman movie. Nothing in 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, we had an announcement. As soon as Smallville was ended, obviously, they ended Smallville because they decided they wanted to bring Superman back to the big screen and launch the DCEU off his back. That's quite right too, by the way. Superman should be the launching of a DC cinematic universe. Dead on. No one else should lead it but Superman. Sorry, Batman fans, but Superman is the Don. Superman was here first. Superman is awesome. Anyway, so Man of Steel to me is an awesome retelling of the Superman myth. Now, it doesn't go through the bright and bubbly and smiley, but certainly it's awesome when Henry Cavill's Superman is smiling when he first flies, or when Clark smiles at Lois at the end of the film. So there is some levity there. So there is a little bit of humour. It might not be the most funniest humour, but, but, but it is there. You know, what's, what's, the S for? what's the S stand for? It's not an S. On my planet, it's for home. But here... It's an S, a little bit of levity. So there's not hilarious moments in this film, but it's a great, epic, dramatic saga. So I love Man of Steel. We then got Batman v Superman. Finally, Superman was going to be in all the DCEU films. Wow, they were really going to use our character. But then the world was split because Batman v Superman came out. Some people loved it. Some people hated it. It made just like under a billion dollars. Not enough for Warner Brothers, apparently. And there you have it. And then we were going to see Superman again in Justice League. In Zack Snyder's Justice League, which we're still fighting for. There will be some release of Snyder Cut conversation near the end of this video. But I really want to get this out in the open. Because I'm really frustrated. And I've been... Never hold your feelings in, people. It's bad for you. It's how mental health illness is grown when you don't tell people how you feel about stuff in a constructive way. So, but um, we had him in Joss Whedon's Justice League, not Zack Snyder's, by the way. It was a mess. Don't need to go over it again and again. They flipping pulled Superman's pants down, bent him over and had a good laugh at him. They destroyed his lip. It was terrible, and they made him do those... They, they, yes, ma'am. But anyway, so then, Warner Brothers decided to look at what happened with Justice League and blame Superman. Yes, it's all Superman's fault. So what did these bums, yes, bums, decide to do? We're going to rest Superman. Remember the Hollywood Report article, which I didn't believe at the time because I was in denial? Because, look, I'm a fucking obsessed with Superman. So I didn't want to believe it. I thought, and I was saying on the video when I read the article, no, Warner Brothers respect Superman. Jeff Johns uh, said that um, <laughs> Superman is very important to Warner Brothers. But then again, Jeff Johns said, also said that Justice League would see the most awesome Superman stuff we've ever seen in live action. Jeff, you lied. I love you, Jeff. Your comics are awesome. Your episodes of Smallville are awesome. And I hope you give us a great Green Lantern film. But you lied. They, these weren't the most epic moments of Superman in a live action movie. In fact, they were the very worst. They were terrible. And how you, Suji Hara, and Joss Whedon actually believed that you could get away with this. And in a way, it's a shame you didn't get away with this. Because at least if Justice League was a success... We would have had Superman cameo cameoing in Aquaman in everything. But because Justice League flopped, you, Warner Brothers, blamed Superman. You blamed Superman because you don't know how to make films. You don't know how to create an awesome, exciting franchise, right? You had it with Zack Snyder. All you had to do is hold your nerve. But you didn't want to do that. Say what you want about Disney. Say what you want about Lord Fake. But at the end of the day, they've done it. They will go down in history as having the most successful franchise ever. They got there first. And all you have to do, Warner Brothers, after Batman begins and after Superman returns, is carry on a franchise. Christopher Nolan didn't want his Batman involved. Then you let him do his trilogy. 
and then you move it on. You create another comic book version of Batman. There's, there's comic books. There's Elseworld Batmans. You could have done anything. And then Brandon Ralph and Batman could have crossed over the Green Lantern movie. When was that? Was that 2009? Whenever? Oh, no, 2011. That could have been the continuation of the new DC Universe. You would have got there before Marvel and Lord Fake. But no, no, because you have no vision. But Disney had vision when they bought Marvel Comics, right? And look what they've done. Look what they've achieved. Even if they make the crappiest, forgettable movies, people are still going to see them. And people are passionate and excited about talking about them. They're not divisive, right? So at the end of the day, right, you blame Superman for the failure of Justice League. Let's get this right. Even though it was Sujihara's fault, even though it was your fault and your shareholders and your board members' fault for making this stupid decision to get rid of a man, right, who made a film, bring in another man, getting to cut this other man's movie and art to pieces and literally urinate on it. Yes, urinate it. Urinate on it. But anyway, let's just blame Superman. So we're going to give Superman a rest. So this was back in 2018, right? We're going to give Superman a rest. So that's true. They have no Superman. So let's now refer to this variety, horrible, toxic article from Justin Kroll and the other geezer, right? Whose name I can't remember. We'll just refer to Justin Kroll. You will be the one who wrote this horrible article. So... Anyway, right, in this article, I still think there's some truths in this article about the future they're planning. I believe them, and I'm excited about that. No need to go off on the Snyder Cut at the end, but there you go. You hashtagged it. That's what was going to get your article attention. You're a bunch of hacks. Anyway, in this article, I can get to my point now. In this article, they said they're not quite sure what to do with Superman. Let me repeat that. Let me repeat that. They're not quite sure what to do with Superman. You freaking absolute bums. Bums, 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 bums. You should not be working in the industry. You should not be in control of DC characters. You are absolutely pathetic. Pathetic. I just have to look at this insignia here and here and I feel stronger. I feel powerful, I feel brave, I feel good. And you can't inspire yourselves to come up with an awesome Superman movie, to put in a director that you want to do it, to, to write the most awesome, epic Superman movie ever. If you don't want to use Zack Snyder, don't, for Christ's sake. But get someone in who wants to make something very special. Someone who wants to give us something that we've never seen before. Take a comic book adapt it, you don't have to comic copy and paste it, and put Superman as your number one tier character, because DC do, DC Comics do, but not you, not you, you don't know what to do with Superman, mm, really difficult, iconic, legendary character who comes from another planet, arrives on, on said Earth, has superpowers, grows up on, in a small Kansas town, then becomes the greatest hero. He can shoot fire out of his eyes. He can fly. He's impervious to pain. He's got weakness, which is kryptonite. He's in love with a woman called Lois Lane. His best friend is a teenager called Jimmy Olsen. But we can't do nothing with that. It's really hard to make a Superman story, isn't it? If you don't know how to make a Superman story, go to my pinned tweet, and let me help you out. And do you know what, Warner Brothers? you know what, J.J. Abrams? I will do it for absolutely free. Nothing. You don't have to say, tell people I'm there. You don't really have to talk to me. I don't need any autographs. But for Christ's sake, an article that you probably said you wanted to go out, that you were okay with, said you are having trouble. And it's so embarrassing that Michael B. Jordan had to come to you and pitch an idea. Yes, you, you, who should have all the think, think tanks there to know. Oh, Superman's our big, biggest character. No, should we just blame him for the mess that Justice League was? Should we blame him for our decisions? Yes, let's blame it on a fictional character. And let's just ignore Superman. Yes, ignore Superman. Because as much as I love Walter Hamada, 
Since he's come in, he has shown no interest in developing a Superman movie. Water, 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 water. Come off it. We've had a Krypton TV show. Guess what's happened? It's been canned. You are bummed. Krypton is one of the high, most amazing Superman, you know, type shows of like live action I've ever seen. I haven't seen anything as awesome since the days of Smallville. And Krypton had a budget. We had an awesome, you know, comic book accurate brainiac. So sci-fi cancel it. What do you do? You get your hands and you sat on them. You sat on your hands like you always do when it comes to Superman. Do you know what? I'm going to say something that's sacrilege here. I wish Kevin Feige was in charge of Superman. I wish Disney were in charge of Superman because I can tell you something. Disney wouldn't be sitting on their hands, would they? Look at the fight they put up to get Spider-Man because they know he's the number one top tier character. And they did everything to get him, and they got him. Now, I might not agree, I might not agree with what Lord Fade's done with him, like I don't agree with what he's done with the Hulk. But at the end of the day, they fought to get the character, and people like my niece absolutely adores Tom Holland as Spider-Man, and it works. Maybe not for us adults, maybe not for us old school fans, but it works for the audience they want it to work for. So what are you going to do with Superman Warner Brothers? Oh, apparently, if we're lucky, we may get a Superman movie in 2023. I'm now 47. I literally have to wait till I'm 50 to maybe, if I'm lucky, if Warner Brothers decide to grace Superman with, with, with their presence, maybe when I'm 50, we will see a Superman film. But guess what, everyone? It's okay, because we've got Crisis on Infinite Earths, and we're going to have three different versions of Superman. Wow. Problem is, Tom Welling, one of my favourite versions of the character, probably won't even suit up. But this is what's worse. This is what's worse, right? Even worse. Tom Welling's Superman on Crisis on Infinite Earths gives up being Superman. Guess why? Because he's got kryptonite night poisoning? No. Because he decided not to be Superman so he can spend more time with Lois Lane. This is Warner Brothers. This is what they do. Again, they get in those red pants, putting them down his ankles, bending him over and having a good laugh while they kick him. That's what they do, right? But it's all right, everyone. Brandon Ralph looks like he's going to be playing an awesome version of Superman, right? Problem is, they're going to find a way to make him look like a toxic male. We know that. So forget about it. It looks awesome. How can it go wrong? We shall see. Anyway, it's okay, everyone. We are actually getting something we've all been dreaming for for years. A Superman TV show. But it's going to be a Superman and Lois Lane TV show. Now, this is interesting. Apparently, even Robin might be in this. So this is going to be done by the people who uh, made the first season of The Flash. Now, the first season of The Flash is awesome. Even Jeff Johns is said to be involved. So I'm excited. But the same thing that happened to The Flash will happen to this show. They'll give us a couple of good seasons and, and, and then the SJWs will come in and destroy this character. You know that. So at the moment, I'm intrigued by this project. I hope it's a great project. But I have no faith. But still, we wait for a Superman movie. Superman done right can earn them a billion dollars a throw, maybe more in a, in a global market when, when all the viewings are done. But no. We still stand in the precipice of a DC cinematic universe with no Superman. We're getting Batman developed. We're getting Batman developed because um, Chris Nolan did well with it. And so they still remember into those days. I'm sure Matt Reeves the Batman will be awesome. I cannot wait. I can't wait for All Men Are Toxic, Harley Quinn, right? And The Birds of Prey. Even though they are going to label us all as toxic. I'm looking forward to it. It's a DC film. Wonder Woman 84. Seen the test screening. I'm very excited. If that's the cut they're going to show you, I'm very excited for you to see that movie because we're certainly going to be talking a lot about it. Yes, yes, yes. Very, very. And let's just say some people are going to love it. Some people will not. But it's going to cause a talking point for sure. But anyway, still, 
We wait for Superman. We wait for Superman. Waiting for Superman. Maybe that's what I'll call this video. And if you're watching this video, you probably already know what I called the video. The future is infinite, isn't it? So as you can see, I'm very triggered. Superman is a license to print money. But then again, so is the Snyder Cut. Now, let's go to the Snyder Cut. How far has our release the Snyder Cut movement got? In terms of educating the mainstream public, fantastic. We now have proved after, a, it's, it's, it's like um, Mark's article I read out yesterday, right? He was saying about that there was kind of a clandestine bunch of people trying to convince people, some members of the media, that the Snyder Cup wasn't real and it was just some kind of, you know, unfinished copy. We now know, thanks to um, Zack Snyder and Jason Momoa, that's a lie. So how far have we come? We have proved beyond a reasonable doubt that the Snyder Cut exists. But now we know that the, the next one, to kind of poo and everything, is, well, it's not done, and it will take lots of money to do it. Blah, 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 blah. I read an article this morning, and I was going to read it to you. Then they said the same crap. And I think from now on, every time I'm going to pre-read the articles, because I don't always do that, uh, for the DCEU Daily and my other content on here. But I will from now on. And if they say that it's going to take millions to finish it, it doesn't get read. Your articles don't get read and they don't get retweeted. And I don't care if you hashtag release the Snyder Cut because we're trending all the time now. So we don't need to keep on retweeting any old shit. All right. So there's that. So how far have we come? Well, we've come a long way, as I say, people. You know, what happened in that big week for release the Snyder Cut on Twitter was massive. But the problem Warner Brothers have now, of course, is every time they try and, pr and promote a DC Comics film, the journalists are going to be there and asking them, what about the Snyder Cut? Every time there's an actor there, what about the Snyder Cut? And probably we'll get to the point where Warner Brothers say, don't ask us questions about the Snyder Cut. But they're going to be asked. And it's going to be problematic. But there's a bigger problem coming for Warner Brothers. They're going to be trying to market Harley Quinn, right? The Birds of Prey film. They're going to try and market Wonder Woman 1984 in Brazil, in the Brazil Fan Expo. Now, Chris Wong made a great point. They're going to have live tweets. This is going to be a live Twitter event where you can actually see the trailer being shown live from Brazil on Twitter with tweets coming through a screen while they're talking to the fans at the expo. As I say, Chris Wong made a great point. What if people just start just hashtagging release the Snyder Cut? I think they should. I think they should. But I think, surely as Chris does, that they will definitely be looking at these tweets and they'll kind of take any off that they don't want to see. It's a very interesting situation. And that's coming, what, well, it's coming in a few weeks. It's coming in December. We're nearly out of November, aren't we? Excuse the throat. As usual, I hate my throat. <laughs> but I seem to hate everything this morning, don't I? But anyway, right? So we are in a situation now where it's becoming awkward for them because um, release the Snyder Cut has hit the mainstream arena and it isn't going away. No matter how many articles they green light, how they spin, how many hit pieces, it doesn't matter anymore. But they are digging their heels in. And the truth of the matter is, no matter how much we don't want to hear this, we are nowhere near to getting... Zack Snyder's version of Justice League released. And so we have to carry on fighting. We have to keep on educating people and going on until we get it. But it isn't going to go away. And every time you try and market one of your DC films, Warner Brothers, everyone's going to be talking about the Snyder Cut. How does it feel? How does that medicine taste? Does it taste bitter? It should taste bitter because I'm, look, this is their position. Now, I've spoken about their position before. The Snyder Cut is an excuse, a license to print money. But it's also a problem because they're not just looking at the profitability and the viability of releasing this cut. They're looking at what it means for what they're trying to do. It's pretty clear to me they do not want Snyder involved. They don't want any chance of Snyder being involved. Releasing the Snyder Cut and it being popular with people, especially the mainstream that are going to come and see it, means that people will be campaigning for Snyder to come back. This is what Warner Brothers most definitely doesn't want. And this is why they're refusing to release the cut. They're scared. 
because love him or loathe him, Zack Snyder is a divisive creative. And he's got people who love him, but he's got people who despise the way he makes films. I love him. I love how he makes films. And I think the, the imagery is how a comic book movie should look. Because let's face it, the MCU movies don't really look like the comic books come to life. Not to me. To others, maybe. But not to me. So he's a genius. He's an artist. But not everyone thinks that. So you've got to look at it from their point of view. Well, you don't have to. And I'm sure that you won't. But I have to. I'm doing this video. So I have to play devil's advocate. That they brought in this guy, Walter Hamada. He got Aquaman to make a billion dollars. He got everyone to love Shazam. Joker is still getting bank over a billion dollars now. Big success. Next year, Birds of Prey, probably a big success. Wonder Woman 84 will be controversial, but will probably make around a billion dollars. So this guy has come in and turned everything around. But he certainly has no intention of bringing Snyder back. When this is his reputation on the line, he's been successful. You know, he's even found a way to kind of, you know, imagine it, right? You had Ezra Miller saying he didn't want Goldstein and the other guy doing the Flash movie, right? So literally, Ezra Miller had the power to kind of say either they go or I go. And he won. He won, right? So he went away and did this script, right? with the comic book writer, right? I forgot his name, the Scottish guy. You know who I mean, right? So they went away and they wrote this script, right? And Christina Hodgson's going to adapt the script. I think it's Flashpoint, but we shall see. I think it could be the original Flashpoint movie, but we, as I say, we'll see. It's definitely going to be a darker, more compelling, gritty tale. So he's got everything in motion. But when I go back to my point about Superman, he doesn't seem to be doing anything about Superman. But I don't care what Variety said. J.J. Abrams will write and direct the next Superman movie. Because it's clear Zack Snyder has got no chance of coming in. I was really um, optimistic after the um, release of the Snyder Cut week. I really thought we were getting somewhere. And then there's been strange for the past two years. Every time we see a chink of light, something happens. We, we thought we were seeing a chink of light. And then Ben Fritz hit piece hit the internet, no pun intended. After the release of Sonic Up Week on Twitter, we thought, yes, they're following Zach again. This is awesome. We're going to get it. Then we get the Variety article. In fact, even Screen Rant was saying just after that Sunday, they, Warner Brothers have no intention of releasing the cut. Devastating, devastating. But they want to knock us down. And they want to knock us down so we don't get back up again. And we must. We must always get back up. Because look what we've achieved. We have we have gone from everyone saying this film doesn't exist to, oh, it's going to take too much to finish. Then if we keep on fighting, well, it is finished, but is it worth releasing it? We are getting there. We are, but we have to keep on fighting. But the main point of my video is that ultimately, I love Superman. He is the ultimate, most relatable character to me. Why? He's the ultimate immigrant. My parents were immigrants. I was second generation. I was born in the UK. I was British, but I faced a lot of racism because you're a foreigner. But when I used to come here in Cyprus, where apparently this is where I belonged, according to all the kids in England, go back to your own country, you know. And then they used to call me a foreigner as well. They used to call us Charlie boys over here. If you're Anglo, if you're English Greek, that's what they used to call you. So I never felt I belonged. So Superman was very relatable to me. Not only was he an immigrant, he was also so powerful and awesome and pure. So there's no, when they say Superman isn't relatable, he's relatable to so many people. Saying Superman isn't relatable is the grossest lie you can even ever enforce on a comic book movie audience. As I said before, get him right and he will make you billions of dollars. You just have to employ the right people. I shouldn't have to make a video and beg Warner Brothers to give me a Superman film. And that's why I say they're a bunch of bums. So what do you think? Should we have had Superman everywhere front and centre by now? And, and by the way, the Deadpool creator agrees with me and I forgot his name. 
He said that Superman should be front and centre and he would be if he was in charge. There you go. There you go. It's not just me saying it. It's, you know, Warner Brothers' treatment of Superman has been despicable. And we all know that. Anyway, comment down below. Let me know what you think. If you like the video, like it, share it. Please share the channel. And I'll be back tomorrow with more DCEU Daily.